Welcome to In Case You Missed It Club. This is a place of positivity on the internet, she says, throwing her arms Ooh. in the air. Yeah, like, it, it surely is. <laughs> Thank you for your generous donation of positivity. It means a lot. Um, today I am joined by Helly Acton, author of The Shelf. This is very exciting. I've got your book right here. Look. Oh. Woohoo! There it is. Isn't that blue? That blue, I just love it every time. It is a very nice blue. Were you involved in the selection of the blue at all? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I would have like, done something terrible. I get asked that question a lot of like, how involved are you in the covers? Like, not even a little bit, <laughs> because <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, yeah, so exactly. that's good to know. No, the, you know, the team show, showed me the proofs and stuff, and all I could yeah. see was just super excited. And oh my God, the blue, it's the bluest blue of all the blues. <laughs> um, so that was my involvement. It was the bluest very blue popular. of all the blues. You'd be very popular with the team, trust me. They will like <laughs> <laughs> I believe that they will enjoy that. Um, so today we're going to have a chat about some of the things we might miss and some of the things we might be nostalgic for because who isn't right now? And also yeah. nostalgia, it's all times now. There is there is no yeah. such thing as a time limit on nostalgia. I'm nostalgic for things that happened last week when I left, last <laughs> left my house. So uh, it can be any time, any events, um, but we're going to get into it because I have so many things I want to ask you. Uh, that aren't about creepy crawlies and all the things we talked about before we started recording. <laughs> I'm, I'm never nostalgic for creepy crawlies. No, excellent. We're on the same page. So one thing I do want to know, because this is one of my favourite questions to ask, I get very excited about it. Who was your first celebrity crush? Oh my God, Gareth Gates. Oh, <laughs> very sweet. <laughs> Actually... I've got, I've always had slightly eclectic taste. Gareth Gates came maybe when I was about sort of, whenever he was big, maybe I was sort of 15 or something, 16. My weirdest first celebrity crush was um, David Bowie in Labyrinth. Oh, nice. But only in Labyrinth with the hair and the leather pants. Makes perfect sense. Full sexual yeah. awakening from the Labyrinth. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of us felt strange feelings we couldn't fully oh, no, understand. I think so. It made me feel funny. And then Gareth Gates came there. Something quite different. Spike both had spiky hair. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Find the find the line that connects. <laughs> <laughs> what was it about Gareth that um, that set your heart aflame? Oh, I just think I just thought he was really cute. And also, how my sister was working for uh, the Sunday Times magazine, and she had she was interviewing him, and we had to do. They needed a couple of people to like do a little photo shoot with him. So I went <sighs> with my friend, and I met him, and we had to like pretend to be fans. But actually, in my heart, I was. Oh. And he was just really nice. He was really nice. Usually I kind of like bad boys, but he was just really sweet. Oh, that's very exciting. I, I think if I'd had to go and meet Mark Owen when I was like 12, I would have just, I wouldn't have been able to hold it together, let alone when I was a teenager. If I'd been a teenager, I would have like proposed. I would have been like, this is what we should just do, Mark. The universe has brought us together. What have you got to lose? You can only say no. That's true. That's true. Although, I was, I was going to say, I won't say something about the stories I've heard about Mark Owen. Um, oh. I don't want to shatter my own childhood. <laughs> like illusions, it's very important to me. Keep it innocent. So you were a Gareth Gates fan? Were you a big fan of his music? Do you still listen to it today? Do you just sort of like throw it on the headphones? I think it was a really, uh, not, not to do him a disservice, I think it was a very brief crush that I had. Um, a brief and a strange one. Um, and I think I loved... Um, I used to love that Spirit in the Sky song, just, just weird little songs like, like that, nothing, nothing too major. But uh, yeah, the, the two I remember are him and David Bowie. It makes perfect like, sense. Boy, that, guy. <laughs> it makes perfect sense that you've gone into rom-coms. It really does. <laughs> like, what other choice did you have? I mean, <laughs> eclectic choice in men. Um, <laughs> moving on from Subji Crush, but connected to your love for Gareth Gates, what was the first record that you remember buying? I think it was All Saints, Never Ever. Ooh, that's a cool one. Yeah, it was good. They were so cool and they had such cool style. And I always really wanted to dress like them, you know, with the sort of crop tops and the baggy pants. And I think it was like the Calvin Klein pants above. Oh, so cool. Above the baggy pants. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, a, I think that was the first record I ever bought. And it came in one of those skinny little single CD cases. That you probably do still get, but I haven't bought one of those for I, ages. Yeah, I don't even know. I know, not that I spent like a ton of time on the Taylor Swift website, I did, um, oh. when the new album came out and she was doing a CD single and it seemed like a big deal. 
So yeah. I don't yeah. know. I feel like with the loss. Well, of in her recent album, album, she did a like a. She CD. did a CD single for Cardigan. She did. Yeah, I'm nostalgic maybe for that. Was, yeah, <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe that's because that whole album is like a bit nostalgic, isn't it? Yeah. She did a, I believe there was a cassette single, or as we call it here in the States, a cassingle. Uh, and I know. I, know, I love it. I know American English has so little whimsy and fun in it. It's one of my biggest problems with living in the States. It's a very practical version of the English language. But for some reason, cassingle. And I love cassingle. Is, is that an actual word? Or they is it just it, like yes. a jazzy, like, oh, yeah. yeah so no, they say, say oh, it. I would yeah. like to buy that cassingle. I don't know if you would say it in a shop. I suppose you would, um, because a lot of people would say to me, like, oh, yeah, the first single I owned. And I'm like, say that again. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> say it again. It's very exciting. But yeah, they love a single. Um, but Taylor did a single and a CD single, which would still be oh. single, I suppose. But yeah. um, and Isn't that and album just so final. great? That album is incredible. So amazing. Yeah. It's really sort of, I mean, it's not like a perky album, but it's sort of really cheered me up. I think we all need it. We it's did. just like calming. It's like a hug. It's, it's an audio Taylor Swift fueled hug. And yeah. I'm a massive fan of the national too. So it was like all of my things come together. Um, oh, perfect. It's yeah. exactly what you needed. I do worry that I've paid for it with the rest of 2020 though. So <laughs> <laughs> like, was it worth that? I don't know. Yeah, um, but I mean, I will find out when my single arrives. <laughs> <laughs> did you just get it to say that? <laughs> yes. Absolutely 100%. <laughs> I love Tay-Tay. I love Kasingles. I, I just, I mean, it's very exciting. Um, so never ever, I do, I remember my friend's dad when we were in secondary school was like the local event DJ. Like he did all of people's weddings and Ooh. parties and stuff. We thought he was very cool. Uh, yeah. DJ and, and village Keith. Keith. Oh. DJ <laughs> and village driving instructor Keith. I come from a very small village, so everyone had to double up. Uh, and I remember oh. him telling us that um, whenever he did karaoke with his DJing, a lot of girls wanted to do Never Ever, but it was a lot more difficult than you thought it was going to be. So that always oh, made really? me have a lot of respect for the, uh, the All Saints girls. I feel like that's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I think because you've got to do the spoken I won't word. do it now. Will you say that? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I do feel like I've carried that with me for like 25 years that every so often I will be like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I could do it. I could totally do it. <laughs> Keith says it's hard, but I bet I could do it. Love karaoke. I could do an karaoke session. I love it. It's my favorite. I'm, like I'm in London. I think we've got a date now. I feel like we are obliged <laughs> to have a karaoke, never ever. Taylor Swift. And the nostalgia, in case you missed it, the karaoke would be amazing. Oh, just delightful. Oh yeah. God, twenty twenty. Don't have to play any new songs; just all classics. It's, I mean, are there are there any new songs? There's only folklore, as far as I know. There is <laughs> only folklore. It's the only music there's that's only been released this year. Oh, there's yeah. only Taylor, and that's fine. Um, do, what was your first album? Do you remember the first album that you bought for yourself, or were you a were you a single girl? <laughs> <laughs> I, so, I was a single girl when I didn't have much money and I was yep, scratching around yeah. my pockets. This this is also gonna make me sound a little bit sort of on the end like different spectrum. <laughs> I think the first I'll, I went from buying I can't remember which came first, probably this one. But I remember I went from like buying a single of Never Ever by All Saints to like smashing pumpkins melancholy and infinite sadness i mean very cool <laughs> i mean very obviously cool. like really lay and then i went into just like a <laughs> real emo entirely fair. Mm. they were very popular the good yeah, kids I, loved them that's another strange crush i had billy corgan from the smashing pumpkins fair yeah, he was a crush he was just very cool yeah i think there was a lot of that i had a lot of cool crushes as i came out of my boy band type era i went into very cool crushes and I couldn't yeah. really explain it, but yeah. I was like, I just, just want to be, I, I was very heavily influenced. That sounds, that was about to come out as a very strange conversation, but I was very influenced by my brother's tastes, not my brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he was very cool. He was older than me and he was yeah. in university and he was very cool. So I thought everything he thought was cool must be really cool. Totally. So, yeah. Yeah. No, my brother influenced me a lot as well. And he was really, I, I then got into hip hop. He was really into hip hop. And he used to come and pick me up in school in his like clapped out car with the windows rolled down, listening to like Snoop Dogg. And I thought I was just so awesome getting into his car. Like, 
That's so much cooler than the time my dad came to pick me up from school and he was blasting the I'm horny song uh, oh, very no. loudly. Yeah. I think it was number one. And I think he had just thought, oh, I'm going to play really like the cool music that the kids are into and then she won't be embarrassed. Um, and instead, I actually just like snuck around the back of the school and walked to my yeah. nana's house and then called oh, him. Like, what? I thought you were picking me up. I thought and he was like, I was at school. I'm like, oh no, I must have walked right past you. So he didn't do it on purpose to embarrass you? I don't good. think so. He, uh, <laughs> like, let's, I haven't been in therapy for a while. Let's get into my dad. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, he is a man who um, would not embarrass himself for the sake of getting a laugh at someone else, right. I believe. Okay. So I think he yeah. genuinely thought he was being a bit cool and that that's what the kids were into. Yeah. Bless him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's go with bless him. Let's decide that that's the way to take that. But uh, Smashing yeah. Pumpkins is still cool. Do you still listen to, is there anything you listen to now that you listened to back then? Yeah, probably Snoop Dogg and a bit of hip hop. And, uh, you know, I listen to the lyrics and I think, my God, how can I be like a <laughs> female-led fiction writer and listen to these lyrics and love these songs? But I just can't help it. They, they just sound pretty cool. Uh, yeah, um, I think there's a line, right? You just have to separate the reality from sometimes sometimes not all the time no. but sometimes you can say this is of a different time and it's <laughs> yeah. not entirely serious no no yeah, not entirely serious i don't believe it myself there you go i, I can not stand for it myself um yeah that still listen to all saints for sure occasionally we'll pop a bit of gareth gate <laughs> and um yeah lots of them i i love i think 90s music 90s R&B in particular, some of the best tracks ever made. Yeah, I loved there. a bit of En Vogue. Love a bit oh, of Oh yeah, Vogue. definitely. Um, Fantastic singers. Yeah, no, I think 90s was a great decade for music. My favourite. I, I spent a lot of it listening to Take That, so I'm not, <laughs> I'm not fully <laughs> on board. And that's all my own fault because my brother was in his room being very cool listening to Grunge uh, while ah. I played Everything Changes until the tape oh, wore out. Did you about it? Yes, endlessly, endlessly, <laughs> still does, it's fine. Uh, and in the end, he took matters into his own hands and marched into my room with, um, I think he had, a, there was a Jean album, a menswear album, and I think definitely maybe, uh, I'm pretty sure it was definitely maybe, because then that year I got my own copy of What's the Story Morning Glory, it was very oh. exciting. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he just had enough and he was like, don't come out your room until these are your three favourite albums. I'm like, okay, yeah. 14, I'll do it. Are you grateful yeah. to him looking back? Mm. Yeah, oh absolutely, but at the time just deeply resentful. So I would just yeah. only listen to take that then on my headphones in the dark of night and it was fine. <laughs> but in daytime I was like, I love Brit Pop. <laughs> I love Britpop. Yeah, well, I would, I kind of, there's, sometimes I wonder like, would I like to be a teenager now? Um, and I think, oh, social media would be terrible, all yeah. these pictures. Uh, I was really insecure and spotty and that would be awful. But then I think it would be quite great to be a teenager during Taylor Swift. That would be. Yeah, that's Cause... true. That's yeah. true. I, I do love, this is now the Taylor Swift hour. I love her so much and I spend so much time discussing my love for her and defending my love for her. I'm like, I'm happy that the whole world has come around to Tay Tay yeah. and folklore. I think they have. On. Oh, she's actually incredibly talented. And we did, yeah. I'm not saying we had a massive fight about it in my house, but we did have a massive fight about it. My husband who respects Taylor Swift <laughs> and has taken me to see Taylor Swift in the past because he knew how much I love Taylor Swift. Um, but he suddenly was like, oh, she's just like, these lyrics are amazing. And she's doing X, Y, and Z. I'm like, she always has though. She always has though. And it's yeah. cute that you're all yeah, now you're up. But she always has though. Yeah. Um, and I do think she does something incredibly well that as a writer, I massively respect in that her world building is exceptional. In every song, she builds a completely different world and does it with such a yeah. tiny amount of language. She's so capable um, of putting together a world yeah. with so few words. And she speaks to the female experience. I think like, like I don't know another artist that's done it as universally well as she has and so relatably. And yeah. I just I mean, listen to the songs and think, oh God, yeah. I literally, like, hang off, I literally hang off every word uh, yeah. of every album of Taylor Swift. And people are probably going to be like, oh my God, that's ridiculous. But she's, she's a serious poet. And yeah. you know, like the, the, 
female version of Bob Dylan. Absolutely, sense, absolutely. I mean, seriously, beautiful words, beautiful lyrics, such meaning, and like just yeah, I absolutely love her. I've got, I had a really good story with Taylor Swift. My when I lived in Australia, my cousin came and flew out to do a road trip with me around Australia, and we listened to 1989 the whole time. Like that was our album for the road trip. Yeah, and we our last stop was Melbourne. That's where we got into our Airbnb and we're outside in the terrace drinking wine. And we're like, God, someone really loves Taylor Swift because they're like, they're playing it nonstop. And then after each song, there seemed to be like a pause and like this weird like shh sound. We're like, what is that? And then I suddenly realized we were listening to a Taylor Swift concert and she was in Melbourne. Oh my God, that's yeah. wild. I know. And then we were <laughs> someone really and then, loves her. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were there and we're like, oh my God, we have to go. And so we booked for the next night to go. And our whole road trip where we'd listened to 1989 until we knew every lyric ended with the Taylor Swift concert. It was, it, was the... to be. Know, it was meant to be. I know. I, there was a 1989 tour that we went to as well. I went in San Diego and I moved to LA not that long before and I'd been on a deadline, if you can believe it, was somewhat stressed. Um, and Jeff was like, so surprise, I know you, I don't know how to fix you right now, <laughs> which is what he's like, I just don't know what to do to make this better. So Taylor, I was like, oh my God. I was like sobbed like a baby, obviously for like an hour. And we went to San Diego to see her um, on the 1989 tour. And I just remember it being like, I've seen so many bands. I've seen so many events. I, li I lived in Williamsburg. I was cool. I was cool yeah, for like a minute. Cool. I've done, yeah. I've done, you know, like, I swear it, but I've never <laughs> felt anything like that communal experience of being yeah. in that baseball stadium full of people who everyone was there because they wanted to be. Everyone was there for a positive reason. No one was there yeah. to crap on it or be rude or be yeah. mean. Everyone just wanted to share the same experience with her. And yeah. watching all these teenagers that were around us too and hearing her say things to them that they were taking to heart. Like I can sit down to a teenager and be like, don't listen to that bully. They're an ass. You're going to grow up and be awesome. And they're going to go, hey, what do you know? You don't know. You're nearly 40. You're just stupid. You don't get me. But if Taylor Swift says it, they're going to believe her. Because yeah. she's written a song that feels the exact way they feel. So she must it's know. Incredible. Mm. Uh, I know. Yeah, she's just so amazing. That's what I've missed. Just Taylor Swift. Did you watch her documentary? Yes, I did. <laughs> I watched it. Of course I, you did. Did yeah, you watch I'm it? I'm sorry. I hate myself. <laughs> um, I just think she's remarkable. I think she's just such an exceptional human being. And exceptional, ex exceptional human beings make mistakes. Of course they do. But yeah. we've watched her grow under a microscope. And the fact that she's got to where she's got without having you know any sort of major public breakdown of any yeah, kind i know and she just I keeps think on i would have done well on, i know and she keeps yeah. on just delivering these incredible songs and i yeah. you know she just she must be such, such a hard worker and just a yeah sort of that was the thing i got from the documentary when she was just like oh it didn't get any nominations okay next i'll i'll do better yeah. and it was like you've yeah. done amazing babe have a sit down have a <laughs> minute <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, and the fact that you can be that driven to work yeah. and achieve, but still be so artistically incredible. Mm. Like, like how, how is she doing this? She should be studied. We need to study yeah. the brain in some we way. Should. But while leaving it in there. Do you think if you hear us talking about her like this, you know, she might like write a song about us. <laughs> it's, and it's, I think definitely. <laughs> I, I, I mean, not to be creepy about it. It's creepy. <laughs> But I was just like, I just really feel like we'd be friends. I hate people that do <laughs> that because it's like, you don't know. But she likes cats. And like like yeah. Right? And I'm you like, oh, that's okay. we're still in the same decade. <laughs> it's okay. But like, she likes cats and Law and Order SVU. I like cats and Law and Order SVU. So I don't want anything from her. You guys have a lot to talk about. You should go on holiday together as well. Take you her should. on holiday. She needs a break. Yeah. She yeah, likes English people. She likes London. Perfect. Maybe we could all come to visit you. Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh, Tay Tay. <laughs> it's all coming together. All, I do this is the thing. I, I don't want anything from Tay Tay. If she's listening to this, don't want anything from you, Taylor. I just want to know you're okay. I want to know you've got the support that you need and friends that will lift you up. Because I yeah. think that's important. Yeah. <laughs> that's and I can be that friend. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, we got off on a tangent. I've asked you two questions that we've just talked about, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you another question because otherwise I will just keep asking you about tales. So, um, do you have, this is a weird one to phrase, but is there a fragrance or a scent that you remember from sort of your, either your early life or your teenage years that makes you think, 
that is a smell that if I smelled it right now, I would be right back in that place. Oh, white musk by the body shop. Yep. Hard, <laughs> yeah. yes. Oh. Yeah, I had um, my best friend, Sarah, lived next door for many years and she was like this amazing collector of perfumes um, and she was a bit older than me. And she had white musk by the body shop and it was fancy because we lived in Zimbabwe so we couldn't buy things like that there so her, <gasps> her, her granny had brought it over and stuff and it was this precious like nectar um <laughs> and uh, it was white musk and i smell it now and i'm like mm, mm. <laughs> but like mm, really nice memories <laughs> it's not a great smell yeah all those body shop smells were the same though i feel like they were so iconic and i can like i i can smell them when i think about them like fuzzy peach jewbury mm. Ananya was a big one for me because that was the new yeah. one when I was in my teens. It was like, oh, Ananya's the new yeah. one. And I'm like, it was so sweet. And the label was... And then I felt really cool if I liked the henna. There was a henna line. Yes. And I was like, oh, this oh, is pretty cool. God. And the crap that I put on my face just because it was sold in tiny pots by the body show. I'm like, why am I making my face covering it in blue clay? My poor teenage <laughs> face doesn't need to be covered <laughs> in blue clay. Well. <laughs> yeah, I just, oh, but those smells. Don't man. worry about the body shop. Is the body shop doing okay? I, as, as a beauty insider, I also have a beauty <laughs> podcast, um, so I know a little bit about it. Uh, it. It comes and it goes through its moments. It's been sold okay. a couple of times. It's, okay. uh, it, it, it gets around. Um, and I, it still does a lot of really good products. You can still get a lot of really good stuff from the body shop. Yeah. And I think it's just one of those brands that's sort of fallen out of favor. You can yeah, buy it. Yeah, it's really gone a little bit out of fashion. Yeah. There's a lot going in there. Like the smells are amazing. Yeah. Like, oh, this is such an experience. Yeah. Like when you go to Lush at a train station, you're like, wow. Um, yeah. yeah, but I just haven't heard of them for a while. Not no, that I great, used to hear from never. Great <laughs> sunscreens. Really, really good uh, sunscreens, especially really? for the face. Yeah. Solid good recommendation on the uh, very lightweight, very easy to wear, big okay. pair of their sunscreens. That is good to know. I will do that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I feel like we've, we've covered all the important faces. No, I, I loved it. I was obsessed with it as a teenager because they had um, these soaps that were shaped like animals from all around the world. And I collected oh. the soaps and it was like the most exciting thing in the world. And then I just had this massive soap. Did you have a collection? Did you, you, ever, did you ever use them? No, that's where I was going with this. I had a weird <laughs> soap collection. I had loads of shaped soaps and I never used any of them. And I'm sure in the end, my mom just threw them out. Because they would get all dusty yeah. and gross. Did you collect? Yeah, and then you, you, get, you probably don't want to put them on your skin. Hmm? Oh. Were you a collector? Did you collect anything? Um, no, I, <laughs> not really. I went through a phase when I was little. This was probably my first, like, stylish decision of my own, sort of like, mm -hmm. I'm going to do me. <laughs> I, used to, I used to wear mismatched socks. Nice. Um, I had a collection of neon coloured socks. They were really thin and they're like bright pinks and greens and blues and yellows and I used to wear them all at the same time. <laughs> so I'd have like four pairs of socks on each foot and I'd roll them down so they're in the rainbow. That's so, I mean, very cool. I mean, that, I mean, really what a loser. I collected socks. <laughs> I, I think that's extremely cool. You were exerting some control over your yeah. early life and that's like... Shows... really bad in growing toenails. <laughs> well, that's that. But it shows a lot of <laughs> personality. <laughs> Um, do you, is there an outfit you remember? What was the first outfit that you remember putting together that wasn't sock related that made you think, oh. like, yeah, this is me. I am me today. <laughs> um, yeah, after the socks, um, we're going to fast forward quite a few years. Fair, reasonable. <laughs> because I don't, don't remember too much about particular outfits. I did go through at university, so a long, you know, long way forward. I went through a phase of wearing, I don't know if you went through this phase, maybe it was just me, of wearing like the ankle warmers with stilettos. Oh. Well, that's not seemed to be foot related. I went to university in Nottingham and I would have had the shit kicked out of me if I, if I had worn the ankle warmers with stilettos. <laughs> but it's a look that I'm interested in. Tell me more. Yeah. It was like 80. I went to uni in London mm -hmm. and it was mini skirts with ankle warmers, stilettos and like canvas tennis bands. Nice. Was that a thing? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I'm not <laughs> that means no, it wasn't a thing. I mean, it wasn't a thing in South Yorkshire or Nottinghamshire. <laughs> that's, that's what I can tell you. And also, it, to be fair, what was a thing in South Yorkshire was very limited. So <laughs> I, I loved my childhood. I loved where I grew up. It was 
I realize now from the outside, it was a very safe bubble of, of being quite protected, um, but it was also somewhat limited in its, in its creative endeavors. Um, yeah. So no leg warmers. I, no, I was a big leg warmer fan as a child. I felt very yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was in flash dance or fame and I would always feel like it very was, cool. I think I was trying to channel that vibe. That sort of, yeah. there was, I think there was an 80s, there was an 80s phase when I was at uni in like the early 2000s and I think I was trying to do that. But I just can't believe I walked around London like for hours and hours in stilettos. I don't remember the last time I was in stilettos. I Ow. keep going to visit my shoes every couple of days because I've worn nothing but flip-flops or one pair of trainers yeah. for the last five months. And so I'll just go in the cupboard and be like, hello, you okay? You okay? Are you guys okay? You right in there? And I tried to put a pair on. <laughs> I don't know. I think I was try testing out an outfit because we were supposed yeah. to be going to the thing. The thing has been cancelled, obviously. But I was like, oh, I guess I'm going to have to wear clothes for this real <laughs> event. And I was like, well, what yeah. shoes would I put with this dress? And I tried to put on this pair of heels and it was like a toddler. I was like a toddler. I was like, ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was not pretty like I guess I don't wear heels wow. yeah no I, I haven't worn heels in such a long time I don't I, I I wish I was better in heels I would love to be just one of those people who are like I don't feel comfortable if I'm not in heels yeah but I my best friend is one of those people and it's I've really? always wow. been obvious yeah and I when I lived in New York I wore heels I never went out in flats like out out you really? know I wore heels every day for six years and Wow. Now I'm like, he heel? Heel? What? What is a heel? <laughs> like, like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. And they squeak now when I put them in. Yeah. I think my feet are growing. Like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I've just got big flat feet now that they look at pointy oh, stilettos. I, yeah. Like, you know. yeah, and I still have like a huge bag them because I can't bear to thread them up. Oh, I'm absolutely never like, One day I will wear these. Yeah. And it will be amazing. <laughs> I'll I run down the road but it's coming. Yeah. It is coming. Yeah, it's, okay. <laughs> oh, it's very exciting. Heels. Oh, I'm going to have to go and visit them today. I'm going to have to go and see them and apologize. Send I just don't want to get into the points anymore. The points. No, I know. I don't, you know, at one point I wore those like really sharp sweaters so much. Yeah. I thought my feet were becoming pointed. Like yeah. at the top. <laughs> it was uh, really bad for them. It can't be good for your feet. I do. I, there are certain things about being a woman and as someone who enjoys a feminist rant, like at least mm. twice a day. There are things that I subscribe to when I go, what, why am I doing this again? What yeah. am I thinking? Yeah. What am I thinking here? And I look at Jeff, my husband, not doing any of it. And yeah. I think, I'm like, mm, have, I, have I bought into stuff that I've been telling other people not to? Well, but, but does it bring me joy? It's so confusing. The biggest problem yeah. with lockdown is I have way too much time to think about things. <clears throat> way too oh. much time to think about things. Very dangerous to overthink. Like no one needs, no one long. needs to be worrying as much as I do about whether or not they should get their Botox touched up. Like it's just yeah. Botox. It's, it doesn't matter. Do it or don't do it. <clears throat> I'm, I'm waiting for the time when you can just do Botox yourself. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe I'm just going to buy some and give it a shot. Like, yeah. like, maybe like the dark interweb or something. I mean, it definitely uh, is easy to get. I just, I just. I know probably a bit dangerous maybe probably a little bit dangerous <laughs> I know I'm like doing a lot of face movement right now because it's new Jeff keeps asking me why I look so tired and angry all the time and I'm like this is just my face this is genuinely just <laughs> my face <laughs> yeah I'm like what, what you married <laughs> was a face full of neurotoxin lie <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, I'm like I don't know what to tell you but you didn't put that in the prenup <laughs> So <laughs> welcome to my face. Um, did you, did you, I'm going to ask you and um, uh, no pressure on this at all, but did you keep a diary as a child or a teenager? Were you a diarist? Um, I kept a diary for a very little bit. Yeah. But then my, then two things happened. My brother found it and then I stopped writing it and I got rid of it because it was really embarrassing. And then the next one, when I got a bit older and a bit naughtier, my mum found it and we had words about the contents. <laughs> so then I stopped keeping a diary. That's so traumatic. That is so yeah. that is very upsetting. I, my mum found one, mine when I was little and like yeah. read it out to the whole family uh, or at least like oh, told well, them all something oh yeah monster um <laughs> he told them and at the dinner table there were like many hilarious jokes made about my diary and i do remember <laughs> flipping the table. yeah yeah <laughs> i flipped the table in a fit of peak um at like the age of 12 i was a very emotional diarist um 
but wow yeah i would not want to have had to have a discussion about the contents that's a lot oh. as an adult because I, um, I think I was, like 12, I was like 12 years old and you know things were getting hot and heavy at around sort of maybe base two <laughs> <laughs> and i read about them and my mum found them and took me for a chat just the two of us oh god growing up too fast the nightmarish chat the might i remember my mum coming in to have the birds and the bees chat and i was trying to put washing away i remember i remember very clearly she sat on the bed didn't want to be having it at all oh. but um i just started seeing my first boyfriend also remember when i was 17 i was not a child it was in, <laughs> it was way too late for anything yeah, like yeah. this i was a late bloomer but i wasn't stupid i read too many books <laughs> and i just remember her sat there being like well we're gonna have to have this conversation and I was like oh my god no oh my god no and I was just you folding, think I don't, don't worry it doesn't matter yeah I'm like we don't we don't have to have it we don't have to have it there's nothing to worry about I'm, I, it's fine it's fine and I'm folding clothes and shoving them in the wardrobe like I'm not catching just her eye. Doors. yeah I'm just do not look at me do not say these things to me I cannot believe you're doing this oh it's so cruel yeah, it's, I guess really, you have to do it but it's very cruel it is but 17 is quite old mind you I'd, I'd rather I was 17 than I was like eight or nine or something well the stupidity was that she knew i already knew so i'm like i'm 17 <laughs> you've seen me reading your barbara taylor bradford books from the age of 10 so i'm like i'm pretty sure you know i go to school like i know what goes on why are we doing this and it was just it was just awful it was just oh it's i don't know what uh, either of us got out of it how, how long did it last the boyfriend or the talk because they, like, they both felt like they went on forever uh the talk was very brief the talk was very brief the boyfriend lasted uh, about uh, oh god 18 months ish a little bit longer oh. maybe it, it died a death when i went to university like these things do um yeah. it was and not before it's time <laughs> like, let's, let's I, ru I ruined my entire first year of university with the boyfriend oh no. that. yeah that's the why i had to from like high school yeah I feel like I knew, I think everyone knew, I think the, the day you get there, you're like, well, this is done. Um, but then you just drag it out and it's miserable and you're both yeah. so happy, but it's like, but we're in love. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> and I feel like I totally missed out on like some really great nights out and I still sort of am quite bitter about it. Yeah, no, rightly so. Me too. Because I'm like, oh, that was the night everyone went to that party and they all dressed up and I went to Sheffield to stare at someone yeah. I didn't like. <laughs> Yay! Teenage years. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I have one more question um, that I'm going to ask you, and it's my favourite question to ask everybody, and I'm already excited about the answer just from what's in your room. Uh, what was your favourite childhood book? If you can pick one. If not, <laughs> you pick several. But I'm going to guess it was that one. <laughs> yeah, a oh, massive Roald Dahl fan when I was this old, just because the words. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just do that again because I've got a bubble in my throat. <laughs> He's overwhelmed with emotion when it comes to talking <laughs> about Roald Dahl. <laughs> just the words and the imagination and the made up stuff. So he was a big part of my life growing up. Um, I think I, I, was, I remember being obsessed with Nancy Drew and all of her mysteries. That was a brilliant series. I'm pretty sure I read them all. Um, and then as I got sort of into teenage years and I started studying sort of English literature, like, Beloved by Toni Morrison was something I became obsessed with and I've read multiple times. That was beautiful and that made me love language because mm -hmm. um, just the way she wrote was so incredibly poetic and stunning. Um, so probably if I had to choose, it would be Matilda Roald Dahl. Fair. Hence that seems why I now have her behind me. Oh, is this your office where I, we're speaking? Is this where you, is, where, is this where the magic happens? This is where the magic happens. <laughs> but don't ask me to turn the computer around. Shant, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, if you could see, I mean, Everything I have this like, horrifying yeah. backdrop behind me because the wall where I usually record against, uh, the shelf fell off it. So now there's big chunks of paint missing from the wall. And if I turn it the other direction, there is a bed covered in crap because oh, nice. I have reverted to being a teenager in lockdown. <laughs> and we had to turn the spare bedroom into an office for me because my husband needed my office office to do his actual job. Oh, um, so, so I now write from the spare bed like a <laughs> child, like just like a teenager covered in makeup and stuff. <laughs> Um, you must so get a lot of inspiration now. <laughs> no, it's been terrible. <laughs> it's been absolutely hideous. I read um, the other day, I went to see a talk by Phoebe Waller-Bridge last year sometime. Oh, and, um she was saying that she writes 
in the morning from bed, like lying down on her pillows and stuff. And I tried that for a while because I just want to be Phoebe Waller Bridge. But um, it was okay. It didn't really work for me. I can't work. She's doing her neck no favours. As someone who is a few years older than Phoebe Waller Bridge, let me let her know now as someone who has spent yeah a lot of her career working from bed because it's where I prefer to be um like you're doing your neck no favors Phoebe get yourself yeah. a nice desk get yeah. yourself with an ergonomic a chair, chair. <laughs> with a real chair <laughs> otherwise you too um when I was writing I think it was I Heart Hawaii I can't remember anymore but um I lost all the feeling in my right arm because I was not sat properly when I was writing and I trapped a nerve and I showed oh my email to the editor going like, so funny story, but I can't feel my hand. <laughs> you were just typing with the other hand, just yeah. one. It, well, it was like, it would still work, but I couldn't feel it. So it was really weird. Oh. Um, and I had to do physio and like fix it. But I'm That like, is a good warning. Thank you. I'm terrible with how I sit. Me too. I'm terrible right now. I'm, I'm, I'm all yeah, hunched I'm up. Like... I'm doing it now. <laughs> Even though I have just told you about my bad neck, my bad back and my destroyed arm. I feel um, like the the main guy in Despicable Me. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm hunchtastic. I have like five times a day I have to go like, like a but little... Sometimes when I think about my posture, like if I'm walking, if I suddenly started walking like this, I think people would think I was complete tosser. There's but that. Like... I'm very weird about posture. Like I have... Um, it's in my head all the time because my nan we come from a tiny mining village but my nan was very interested in looking like a lady and walking properly and having shoulders and she would do a lot of you know she would pull your shoulders back but she would kick my legs in because my legs were splayed so I would like walk I walk like a pony now um to the to the dismay of many yoga teachers in my more middle class life these I days yeah, I know, I'm like, oh, that's, and it's true like my now my knees sort of turn inwards a little bit because oh. of how I'd like walked as a kid um but it makes me very conscious of it but yeah most of the time when I try and be like no this is how I should be I feel like a twat why why yeah. is that why do we feel like tossers <laughs> sitting properly I don't know I feel like people think I'm too big for my boots or something yeah. <laughs> good posture is apparently a sign of being <laughs> being a bit full of yourself oh oh you like <laughs> yourself don't yeah, you, you with your healthy right spine now. <laughs> you and your healthy spine think she's clever <laughs> i'm just learning a lot about myself today um thank you so much this has been the nicest nicest chat so tell us about the shelf uh, i want everyone to know everything about it they should go and read it it's wonderful here it is i'm gonna hold it up while you tell us oh. about it so this is the shelf it is a book what i wrote last year and it is um a story about amy who thinks that her long-term boyfriend is whisking her away on a dream holiday to pop the big question but instead he dumps her on the set of a really brutal new reality show called The Shelf, where she's joined by five other women and they have to take part in these weird, sexist, awful challenges to prove their worth and be crowned the keeper at the end and win a million quid. And it's about the women coming together and instead of sort of competing like producers want them to, they band together, they lift each other up and they rewrite the rules. And it's funny and it's clever and it's feminist and it's all the things that we like. So congrats on having Thank such an amazing you. debut. Uh, and where can everyone find you if everyone wants to come and talk to you about Taylor Swift? <laughs> Whereabouts are you? Please, please, I welcome any comments about Taylor Swift, um, about Gareth Gates, or any other weird crushes. Instagram Excellent. is where I'm at, more so than Twitter. I'm a bit scared of Twitter. That's, that's right and proper. <laughs> so, <laughs> that seems so. And it's just at Helly Acton? At, at Helly Acton Author. Excellent, Helly Acton author, because you are, you are an author. I know, author. I was embarrassed to put that at the end. No, <laughs> don't be. It's amazing. Kind of do um, of self-promotion. <laughs> like you and your self-promotion and your fancy posture. Your oh, spine. God. Who terrible. do you think it's you terrible. are? <laughs> <laughs> on that note, on that horrible negging note, uh, I'm going to say thank you so much for joining us. This was so much fun. Um, and I can't wait to read the next one. So if you could crack on, that'd be amazing. Oh, yeah, no problems. <laughs> Thanks so much, Lindsay. Bye.